Hi everyone, welcome to VR for Work. Today is November 11th, and today we're coming to you using an application called Loom AI. You probably see it up there in the upper uh, left-hand corner of your screen. Um, the Loomy, or the Loom AI avatar, is an avatar I've used since uh, the very beginning of the VR for Work channel. Um, they make an application for Windows Desktop that you can use um, and participate in video conferences utilizing a very reasonable, lifelike, if you will, avatar like I've used here for this presentation. And um, I thought I'd try something a little bit different. And while I'm not in VR and not using a headset, I am bringing you this uh, augmented reality or mixed reality presentation uh, here at VR for Work today, utilizing uh, the Loom AI desktop application. We'll do a episode on Loom AI coming up soon so you can learn all about it. But today, we're here to talk to you about one of our favorite um, all-time productivity applications in VR, and that is Immersed. What I want to do is switch over here just a minute, and I am going to share my screen, and we will get started. Um, Immersed is a application that we've talked about many, many times here on the VR for Work uh, show, and it is one of the top, if not the top, desktop emulators for personal productivity from within a head-mounted display. So Immersed works within an Oculus Quest and allows you to reach out to a client that's running on your Windows, your Mac, or your Linux desktop, and bring that desktop into your head mounted display so that you can uh, work on it and then spawn up to five virtual monitors in your uh, 3D space so that you can be ultimately productive. One of the gotchas though with working um, within a uh, head mounted display for personal productivity is text input. And it was certainly one of the things I struggled with the most when I first started to adopt working um, within VR. And uh, the particular route that I took, because I'm not a touch typist, is to leverage and utilize voice recognition. And if you've watched some of the uh, older uh, VR for Work shows, you know that um, I get very excited whenever an application allows me to use my voice to do text entry. So um, today, though, we're going to show you a very, very cutting edge, uh, innovative uh, feature that the Immersed dev team has brought to fore that is probably, I might suggest is a first um, within VR, but allowing you to map your in real life, your IRL uh, keyboard for you to be able to use hand tracking to access it from within VR. And so what is it that we're talking about? Okay, so Immersed came out probably a couple of months ago with the capability to do use hand tracking within their application to manipulate your, your monitors, even your mouse to a degree on the screen, and their controls and commands within the application. Um, what they've done uh, with that is taken it to the next level of now um, combining the Quest hand tracking with an in-app static keyboard overlay that, that maps the position of your keyboard in front of you um, so that you can utilize the hand tracking in your headset, the static keyboard overlay in front of you, and be able to look at your hands and type. Um, now, some of you might be really good touch typists, and, and if you've been working in Immersed already using touch type, uh, this is probably not such an issue for you, but I would say that the vast majority of folks who might consider working within VR um, struggle with this particular issue of text entry and needing to glance down at the keyboard. Now, um, 
before we jump in, and don't worry that you're missing anything on the video, we're going to go over this in detail in just a moment, but I just want to make sure that I'm really clear about what Immersed is providing you here, right? Again, Immersed already has hand tracking available in the app. They now give you the uh, option to positionally set your keyboard that uh, you know, exists in real life in front of you in the app and then use the uh, hand tracking to be able to see your hands as you're seeing on the video there um, in, in correct position over top of your keyboard. One, um, one important point is that this process works only with a standard QWERTY keyboard. So if you have a split or a winged keyboard, or you have um, a Dvorak keyboard, or some other kind of non-standard, if you will, keyboard that's not the 101 key QWERTY layout, um, this is not going to work for you. So know that up front. All right, well, let's jump in and take a look. So right away, um, what you'll notice is that I'm already invoking hand tracking. And, and, and in my particular case, I don't leave hand tracking on by default. Um, so I had to you know, go out of Immersed and kind of turn that on in the Quest settings. And once it's on, now I'm using hand tracking to uh, resume the Immersed application and we'll, we'll take it from there. So I'm going to resume Immersed and then um, the, the dev team at Immersed, you know, a really smart group of people um, recognize that when they have the users coming in to do this, they really need to walk them through very carefully how to uh, give commands basically with pinches of your fingers. And so when hand tracking is on by default, you'll notice that my hands are brightly lit pink and, and very visible in front of me. Um, and then you'll see that there is a, a glowing um, touch point on my thumb and my ring finger. And you can see above my hands, um, they're telling you, hey, pinch with the ring finger to disable. So to disable hand tracking, you're going to pinch your thumb and your ring finger together. And you'll see my hands go gray or let's say uh, dim um, if I pinch my pointer and thumb, nothing happens. But if I pinch my ring finger and my thumb, hand tracking is off. But I need to have hand tracking on. And then one of the other conventions within Immersed is it, it, it's, it's a, what they call a partial pinch. And so if you uh, hold your hands kind of out like you're grabbing a cup and you start to pinch your thumb and your fingers together, you will invoke the pointer, right? The laser pointer uh, or the mouse pointer, if you will, within the app. And so I'm doing that now to grab that bullseye um, that's under the uh, uh, keyboard overlay that I had set up prior to this video. So I'm gonna grab, grab that and turn it off. Yeah, what happened here? Okay. And uh, let me see, let's get back to that spot. And I'm going to grab that and I'm going to turn that keyboard overlay off and then walk through the steps of setting up a new keyboard overlay. So I get the pointer, I uh, will hit that bullseye and that will turn that overlay off. And so the, the concept of doing this overlay is statically having the keyboard in front of you, keeping your head very, very still. This is another tip, okay, because the way that the application is mapping your keyboard in space is in relationship with your hands and your head, specifically your right index finger and your head. And one of the things that I had trouble with initially setting this up is that I would bob my head up to look down my nose um, to see where my finger was. And of course I was moving the position of my head, which kind of tilted my keyboard. Um, and so it didn't quite you know, map correctly. And so you really need to work on keeping that head still, right? none of this bobbing motion, um, as you're doing this mapping. Now, what I did later, I kind of had to figure out a, a method for doing this because I'm not a touch typist. So, you know, trying to kind of slide my hands across and find the P, Q, and B keys were not working for me. So I took some cellophane sticky tape. Uh, you know, you might use one of those 
uh, little uh, folder tabs or something that will help you identify it. And I put it on the P, Q, and B key so that I could very clearly find those keys, but not move my head while I was doing it. And so they have you push down on the P key with your right index finger. Then they have you go find the Q key with your right index finger. This won't work with your left, right? And then the B key. And so that triangle that it's making is approximating the size and the position of the keys of where that overlay is going to sit. And then after you do that last B key, there it is. You know, they should probably have confetti drop and fireworks go off, I don't know. But um, there's your keyboard and it works really, really well. Um, you know, and, and the rest of this video is really just me playing around, typing on it, but being able in, in <laughs> you know, my world and the way I type, being able to look down and see that hand position and relationship to the keys and an actual keyboard works great. Now, you're not mapping your, um, your mouse. And of course, hopefully that's not too much trouble, right? If you're loosely using your mouse and you're right-handed, it's kind of off to the right. You'll be able to reach out and grab it. Uh, you're left-handed, it's off to the left. For me, I, I use a, a laptop, so I use my Touchpad, which is right below the keyboard, makes it really, really easy for me to, to move my mouse around and get my hands back up. But um, yeah, this worked well. And then I just kept playing and playing and playing around with it. Uh, you know, I'll be honest, it, it's not quite like the real thing. Um, you, you have to kind of get used to the fact that your head is in VR and your hands are in VR and you are touching and typing this thing that is in real space even though it's represented within VR. So it's, it's a little bit different, um, but I found that I took to it really, really quick and um, kind of didn't want it to go away once I was done, done typing. So yeah, this is, this is without a doubt um, just the most innovative thing that I've seen um, come out in a very innovative um, industry in, in, a, in a quite some time and certainly shows you what's possible when something like uh, Oculus Infinite Office comes out. But uh, for those of you who are using Immersed and use this keyboard, uh, Infinite Office will be um, old news uh, when it comes out for you. All right, well, I hope this was helpful. Thank you for joining us again here at VR for Work. We hope you'll continue to tune in, check out our VR for Work uh, Facebook group, um, our Twitter account, and if you need to reach out to us, it's VR for work, no O, W R K, VR, the number four, W R K at gmail.com. So thank you again, and we'll see you in the metaverse. Bye now.